Hello, everyone. Um, just in case I uh, go a little long here, because I've only got 10 minutes, um, we're at booth, we're Global Energy Metals, and we're at booth 1139 and 1141 for anybody that wants to come by. If we don't have time for questions, you can find us pretty easily. We have a black Model S Tesla in the booth. Um, first off, maybe on a little interactive note, how many people uh, are Cobalt investors right now by a show of hands? Okay. And how many people uh, are concerned about cobalt and some of the stories that are coming out that it will be deleted from the battery metal supply chain? Okay. All right, hopefully we can answer a couple of those questions along the way. Well, this is the basic. Um, there's a younger demographic out there now. Um, governments are reacting to pollution. Young people are demanding that uh, cars be zero emission, uh, and that includes scooters and motorcycles. So a lot of this is coming online. We have nine billion deaths a year globally linked to air pollution. Um, so these are all fundamental changes that are happening now. Uh, electric transport is coming in a better way, uh, or coming in a major way, and it's good for the environment and generally for us. How do we capitalize on the battery revolution? Um, well, we come, in, we, we come in at the junior level investing. If you want to uh, play Cobalt as a pure play opportunity, and you can join in on that EV battery rep movement. Cobalt is one of the uh, crucial battery metals. Um, the Tesla that we have outside right now uh, out of the battery, 1,100 pounds worth of battery in that car, uh, seven and a half kilos of cobalt in that battery. Uh, growth in the battery sector is set to continue. Uh, demand for lithium ion batteries, batteries is set to grow enormously. Uh, and this is an important stat. Demand for cobalt and batteries is expected to grow at 14 and a half percent per year out to 2027 at which point demand for the end use sector alone could exceed 240,000 tons, and that's twice the market of 2017. So you're looking at some substantial growth, some substantial supply and demand scenarios here. By the early 2020s, uh, cobalt demand looks to be expanding around 13 kilotons a year, meaning the equivalent of a major new mine is required each year. Um, and as you can imagine, that, that mine cycle takes a lot of time to come online. So uh, cobalt is not an easy puzzle to solve for a lot of the suppliers and the end users right now. Um, with demand for cobalt also comes demand in the aerospace industry and other industries that are out there. That market, uh, that extant market is out there right now. You've got super alloys, jet engine turbines, all these things, magnets, catalysts. So the total demand is 310,000 tons, prospectively by 2027, which is huge. Cobalt is used in a variety of applications. I just mentioned some super alloys, high strength steels, magnets, catalysts, but the rechargeable battery sector accounts for the largest portion of that cobalt use. And you can see it on the left, We've got devices, we've got cars, we've got everything in there. And then on the right, coming in at peaking at around 40 to 50,000 tons, you have the extant industrial uses. So that goes back to the super alloys and the high strength steels, et cetera. Ownership of electric vehicles, I don't think anybody's surprised by this, will increase dramatically in the next 20 years. Cobalt is critical. And although various battery chemi uh, chemistries are being explored, we feel and research is showing that that will be more than made up for by the demand that's coming, uh, by the cars that are coming online. Because we've got, it's no longer just Tesla, it's Ford, it's Mercedes Benz, it's BMW taking very large stakes in the cobalt market. Two leading battery uh, chemistries, nickel cobalt, aluminum NCA for short, NMC or nickel manganese cobalt. Uh, if, we, if we take a look at those two major chemistries, we have probably what a lot of you have heard of, this perspective 811 ratio, so eight parts nickel, one part manganese, one part cobalt. 
even with that coming online, and we have a fairly uh, aggressive scenario here, 40% of market share by 2026 for an 811 battery, that would still require the market to triple from last year's production of 50,000 tons uh, out of a total production of just over 100,000 tons. So even with that chemistry, that demand side scenario is still going to push cobalt supply. Cobalt's problems, I think probably most of you are aware of this, cobalt typically occurs in low concentration, so it's a byproduct of nickel and copper. That means that uh, areas like the DRC, and you can see in the pie charts there how much the DRC accounts for of the worldwide market. Um, you've got DRC mine 66% uh, in 2017, out to 70% by 2025. The DRC also has 3.4 million tons of reserves, or 48% of global reserves. So that's a lot of concentration in one country. Uh, and I'll go back there for a second because also with the, DR, uh, with the DRC, we've, we've got problems that are specific to that country. We have infra infrastructure problems, we have economic problems, and political problems as well. So that is a lot of concentration in a country that could not be stable over the coming years. Here's the best case, uh, base case scenario uh, for near-term uh, cobalt market surplus for the next two years. Further out, the market slips into a deficit, and that is because of that demand. We've got a lot of manufacturers getting into this marketplace, and it's not perspective, it's here and now. Uh, Ford just announced last week that they are going to bring out a fully electric version of the F-150. So you can imagine just in that one vehicle line what kind of demand you'll see there. I'll, I'll get to wh what, what is our idea here, Global Energy Metals. We're going to bring, we're leveraging some experience. We've been in the market for about eight years in terms of the management team. We bring a lot of experience. Our CEO and president often speaks on Cobalt at conferences. He's got a wealth of knowledge, so we bring that in there. Uh, and we pair it with the idea that the projects have to be legitimate. They have to be in a safe, secure jurisdiction and there has to be clear title and the ability to advance the project in a rational way. So we're not looking for unstable jurisdictions um, and, and those have larger opportunities sometimes, but we are not looking for that. We're looking for large opportunities in stable regions. The Millennium Cobalt Project, we're uh, entering into an agreement for 100% of that project. It's located in the Mount Isa, District of Australia. Mount Isa is a very prolific mining region. Companies like Newmont and Glencore have been there for a long time. There's good infrastructure. There's a lot of experience that can be tapped in there. We also did, uh, did the deal because we love the technical team. They have excellent knowledge of the project. They worked it. It was originally looked at through a copper lens and uh, they kept encountering cobalt, so they brought us in for the cobalt expertise. We're very happy to be there. Uh, and along with that acquisition comes two additional properties, uh, more greenfield opportunities, but still very large, and they share that same geology with the Millennium Cobalt Project. Millennium is about uh, on a jork resource. It uh, is 3.1 million tons, grading 0.14% cobalt. Uh, sorry, I'm going quickly here because I see I've, uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, so 0.14% cobalt, open pitable. We drilled some holes earlier this year, 10 of them. We confirmed the technical uh, details on the property and some of the information that was, was outstanding on it. We also started preliminary metallurgical work, which is very important for cobalt, and we obtained 95%, better than 95% recovery on the cobalt and copper. So we're very happy with the results. We expect to, uh, this late spring, early summer, we will go back to Millennium, drill 10 more holes. Uh, there's a strike zone across the property of about one and a half kilometers. We will drill that and there's going to be a couple of holes up north on another strike line about 1.5 kilometers 
has good geochem on it, and it's relatively untested. So we're going to go back and test that shortly. Thank you, people. Sorry, I don't know how I ran out of time, but I've run out of time. Again, uh, booth 1139 and 1141. Uh, would love to see you here, and I can get into a little more detail.